All right. Good afternoon, folks. Thank you so much for joining us today at yet another recruitment event. We're so excited, and I specifically am extremely excited to be bringing you a science event uh, so you can learn a little bit more about the Faculty of Science at Carleton. Specifically this, uh, this evening or this afternoon, we actually are um, hosting a science student panel. So you'll actually hear from a series of amazing science students at Carleton. Um, and I have to say, this is one of my favorite events uh, because I myself Myself am a, uh, a, a graduate from the Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry. I graduated last June 2019 and I am now a recruitment officer. So for those of you who have seen me at our other events, my name is Celine Chartrand and I'm super excited uh, to, to be bringing this event to you folks today. So without further ado, I do want to pass it on to our moderator, Millie Close, today. Uh, Millie is an incredible student at Carleton. She is in, uh, a current student in the Bachelor of Health Sciences. Um, she's doing her concentration in um, disability and a chronic illness, as well as a minor in communication and media studies. So she's, uh, she's really getting an amazing degree and uh, she's very involved as well. She's been a part of a lot of uh, different extracurricular opportunities on campus, which is amazing. So without further ado, I'll pass it on to Millie. Um, and quickly before I do, I just want to feast your eyes to the right of your screen where you'll actually see a Q&A section. It's, it looks like a few people are already asking questions, which is amazing. But please feel free to put any of your questions in here. Our team on the back end will be answering them throughout the event as well. All right, so let's jump right into things. Hello everyone, my name is Millie. Uh, thank you so much, Celine, for that awesome introduction. Um, one of the things Celine mentioned was that I've been super involved in extracurriculars since I came to Carleton, and I wanted to shout out to science specific ones while I'm, I have your attention. Um, so yeah, this year I'm a peer mentor with the Science Student Success, uh, a place on campus that offers support, uh, facilitates upper year students mentoring new students, uh, and offers a lot of really cool workshops about how to succeed in, in science. Uh, another one, I'm also part of the Carleton Science Student Society. I'm the president this year, which is really exciting. Uh, the Science Society, or SciSoc as we call it for short, runs a lot of really exciting social programming for students within our faculty. Um, this year it looks a little bit different since we're online, but in the past, our biggest event of the year is our Science Winter Formal. It is so much fun. Um, great, so this afternoon we're chatting with five current students in different programs. I'll let them introduce themselves, but I do really want to encourage you folks to ask your questions using the Q&A feature uh, that Celine just mentioned. Uh, our panelists and our recruitment team will be answering questions as we go through the event. So with that, I'll pass things over to our panelists for some intros. Hello everyone, my name is Sarita. I'm in my last year in biology with a minor in business and I'm really excited to be here. Um, I'm a little, a little bit more about me. I'm involved also in the Carlton Science Student Society and I've been involved in the co-op program. Uh, I'm here to answer any of those questions, so please uh, don't hesitate to ask. And yeah, looking forward for having this discussion with amazing people. Hi everyone, um, my name is Adriel. I'm in my third year here at Carleton. Um, I'm in neuroscience and mental health, minoring in both biology and chemistry. Um, and like Sarita said, if you have any questions, whether it be like anything that I'm specifically involved in, um, like neuroscience or bio, uh, feel free to ask them and I'm looking forward to answering any questions too. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Emily. I'm in my third year of health sciences with a double concentration in global health and disability and chronic illness. So it's a really fun program. Um, I'm really excited to be here and to chat with all of you, and I'm looking forward to a great event. Awesome. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Abby Corsetti, and I'm in my fourth, and I love saying this, my final year of biochemistry honors here at Carleton University. Um, I'm also involved with several extracurriculars on campus, so that includes the Science Student Success Center, uh, the Carleton Chemistry and Biochemistry Society, and also, as Millie said, the Science Society. So, yeah, glad to be here, guys. Hi, 
Hi everyone, my name is Mackenzie and I am a second year student in the Interdisciplinary Science and Practice program uh, with minors in business and biology. I'm the baby on the panel, so I'm a little closer to the time when you guys, where you guys are with uh, applying. Uh, so yeah, I'm here to answer any questions about that and really excited to chat more about my experience with Carleton so far. Excellent. Thank you all so much. Um, we really do have an incredible panel of students here today, so I'm really looking forward to hearing their answers to our questions. Uh, so with that, I'll start us off with our first question. Uh, I'm going to ask Abby first. So what do you feel is the most important thing students should be thinking about when choosing their university and choosing their program? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the best thing is actually going to be a, a quite encompassing what I'm going to say. Uh, you're looking for whatever university is the best fit towards you. Now that could be towards your goals, uh, your needs. And that's actually probably easier said than done because that also results in you requiring you to know what your goals and needs are, right? If you are interested and passionate about, say, research, maybe you should go to a school that is pursuing that at a high degree, right? Also, financial aid is an important one as well. Mackenzie, sorry, you might just want to un unmute yourself there. <laughs> right, sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so I was just saying, I think at 17 and 18, a lot of students are told like to follow their passion and do something they're really interested in, but you might not 100% know. You might know you're interested in science, but not maybe exactly where you want to go with it. Um, so I think a good approach is to look at, you know, what subjects do you excel at? What do you feel excited about attending in school? And kind of use that as a guide. And then also for choosing university in general, I think looking at the community and looking at, you know, how different areas of the school are built to actually foster community because, you know, all universities are going to have good profs, bad profs, some good research, some maybe not as good at research, but the community is really something that is specific to each school. So looking at how that uh, fits with you, I think is one of the better ways to judge it. So for me, um, choosing a program, it needs to be something that you're really passionate about, um, which is the most cliche thing to say, but it's true. Um, a big thing that you have to keep in mind is that nothing is ever set in stone. You can always change your mind, go on a different pathway, tailor your education to what you are really interested in. Um, and it doesn't matter if you determine what that is a little bit into your journey. Like for me, for example, I went into Carleton with my one concentration in biomedical science. And then once I got here, I realized like um, I can add on a minor in biology because it suits my interest. So I did that. And then I took a few more courses, learned a few more things, spoke to more people, and I realized what my true passions were. Um, so that led to me dropping both my biomedical concentration and my biology minor. Um, and I picked up um, my double concentration, which is disability and chronic illness and global health, because I found that that was what I was most interested in. So it's important to keep in mind, like, as long as you have a sense of what you're passionate about and you kind of direct yourself into that lane, um, you can always customize it once you get it there um so that's a big thing and then for the university i think like abby was saying you have to find something that suits you so something that i did um in grade 12 was i made myself a little excel spreadsheet i tried to figure out what things were most important to me when choosing university and then i i put them all in and then i ranked all of the universities based on those um features and that really helped to like clarify in my mind um what my top contenders were and what i was like most interested in and like what I was looking for the most. So those are some tips for me um, and I'll pass it on to Sarita. Hi, yes, I actually agree with everyone in the panel. Um, not to repeat things, but I, I'm still gonna be a little bit cliche. 
do whatever makes you happy, but also don't listen all these stereotypes of many programs in science. Um, you may hear, you know, oh, science is too difficult, too hard, things like that. Don't listen to them because if you're passionate about something, you can do whatever you want to do. So I would say that's my piece of advice. Again, you can add things as, uh, as Emily said, e later on the date, if you realize you have many passions, I realize that I love business. Um, so that's why I added my minor in business. And I feel even though they're different, they complement each other. So yeah, just do whatever makes you happy. Uh, it's okay not to know whatever makes you happy. Like right now you have time and don't listen to anyone but yourself. So yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, like pretty much kind of like what everyone's already said. Uh, totally agree with everyone, um, but I guess my reasonings are a little bit different. Um, so for choosing the university, um, I would say like kind of like what Mackenzie said, it's really important to look at the, the community um, like in the different universities because that is kind of what what changes like in different universities because obviously if you're picking a science program, you're kind of going to be learning about really similar things. Um, science is science. It doesn't really change that quickly. Uh, so whether like, you know, chemistry is not going to change from one school to another school, like if you know what I mean. So in that sense, community is really important because you want to surround yourself with individuals that, you know, you can work with. Because at the end of the day, these people will end up being like your, your colleagues or your coworkers in the future. So you want to pick a school that kind of has you know, a good um, a good culture amongst the undergraduate students there because you want to work with people that are like minded and not just trying to compete with each other. Um, as for the program, so similar to what Emily said, I would say that, you know, picking a program that you're actually passionate about is super, super important. I personally am actually a transfer student, so I didn't start my journey here at Carleton. Um, and what I did is I actually I started another university because, you know, I went into a program that all my friends were going into just because that's what I thought was right to do. And I didn't love it. I wasn't passionate about it. So I didn't end up, you know, achieving my goals. And I think that's something really important when you're choosing your program to choose something you actually love because it does make a really big difference. Thank you all so much for your responses. I loved hearing about um, folks as like, take on the community vibe on a campus or within like a, a university community. I mean, I'm a little bit biased, but I absolutely love the vibes we have in the Carleton Science community. Um, I've always felt really supported by my peers, which is also like a really important thing when you're choosing a university. So thank you. I'll move over to our next question. Um, when you were in high school, what was your biggest worry or concern about university and how did you overcome it? Um, this time, let's start with Adriel. All right, so when I was in high school, um, like my biggest concern going from high school to university, when I was in high school, I took summer school almost every single summer. So by the time I was in grade 12, I didn't really need that many credits to actually graduate. So I took a lot of spares. And so I believe in my last semester of high school, I only had two classes in my last semester. So my biggest worry switching from high school to university was the workload because I, I would have gone from two high school courses to five university courses and that's such a huge um, jump in workload uh, and I'm sure like a lot of you are probably also taking spares so you may have a similar concern and what I did with that is you know I really focused on time management because um, like when you have a lot of things on your plate like it's it's not impossible to do but it definitely does require a lot of coordination um, so whenever you're you know going to do a lot of things it's important for you to know what you're doing not just you know having a bunch like just knowing that you have a bunch of things to do so i guess like how i combated my worries was you know just being very thinking ahead of time and planning what i needed to do So my biggest fear coming into university, um, I was being told by a lot of people about like a mark drop that everyone experiences in their first year where like 
your marks drop a significant amount from like where you were in high school. And um, that scared me a lot because I put a lot of my self-worth into uh, my grades and like how I did academically. Um, so the thought of not being able to like maintain that was very scary for me. Um, so I got here and I do have to admit that first year was an adjustment. There was some other things happening in my life that kind of affected my grades as well. But in the end, like where I am now in third year, it, it doesn't matter. Like I was able to recover from it completely um, by utilizing a lot of the things that Carlton has to offer and, and like um, related to uh, student support. Like we have this one thing uh, called PASS and it's peer assisted study sessions. And it's kind of like you have someone in um, an upper year who took the course that you're in and did well in it. And they kind of give like workshops on like the things that are covered in class. And they're really, really helpful. It's a really amazing thing that we have as an option. And just like um, meeting with profs and talking to them and like talking to my TAs, I was able to recover. And so the mark drop really wasn't a factor for me um, just because I was able to utilize all of the supports that were in place for me to use. So that was that was my worry. Um, yeah, so I hope that this helps um, anyone that has the same thought because I feel like it's a common one. Hi, so I had three main concerns. First, my, that I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have like good grades and do well in my courses. The second one is that I, I wouldn't be good at it at all. Like I wouldn't be, I wouldn't understand what they're saying. And the third of all is that uh, English is not my first language. So I was kind of scared about having English classes. Um, but I would say that uh, the best advice I got from, you know, from actually a professor was that uh, it's not that you're not good at it. It's that you need a little bit more practice. Um, and I feel that's so truth. Um, it's not that even if you're scared, even I know it's going to be like challenging to, you know, to get into a new, new different experience, but you need to believe in yourself and you need to realize that it's step by step and that you can practice and then you can ask for feedback and everything is going to be fine at the end. So, yeah, that's my my experience. Yeah, I agree with a lot of the things the other panel members are saying about fears. Uh, as someone who is m the most recently to have applied and come to university, I think one of my biggest things was wondering if the program I had chose was matching like my goals and interests. I've actually, I'm on my third program now uh, and I'm only in second year. So that just shows you that really, if you don't exactly know what, you're, what you want, you can always change it. Um, and I also was worried about going from, you know, the small pond of either your town or your high school um, to the big pond of university. You know, so many students, how am I going to fit in? How am I going to stand out and do the things I want to do kind of thing? Um, and I think what I realized, especially when I got here, is that A, you can change your program if you aren't happy with what you've picked. Uh, and then the second one is that University, while it's a big pond with a lot of students, it's actually really just made up of a lot of different small ponds. You know, science is one pond, business is another pond, and you can stand out in those circles and you can find your people uh, in those circles. So I think people shouldn't get discouraged if they don't, you know, find their pond right away because there's so many out there. There's so many groups within the university community. So if you're worried about not finding your place, uh, there's, there's always opportunities to do that. Yeah, kind of expanding on what Mackenzie said, uh, although I did fear the transition from high school to university, I also feared the fact that I found that it, I thought it would be hard to fit in. Uh, having gone to high school for four years with a bunch of people that I had known since middle school, this was the first time in my life, at least in a long time, that I had to make new friends. A lot of my friends had gone to U of T, to Ottawa U, to Queens, and none of the people I knew were in my program, and therefore I had to start afresh with all my friend groups. Now, the awesome thing about Carlton and kind of expanding on the pond idea that Mackenzie talked about, you'd be surprised how many like-minded people that you will find as long as you put yourself out there and pursue passions or some things that you're interested in. 
Uh, I'm a biochemist major, major, and therefore I joined the Biochemistry Society. And subsequently, some of my closest friends now happen to be people that I met through this. So there's something out there for everyone. It's just up to you guys to do your research, find out what you're passionate about and where you can pursue that with the Carleton campus. That was great. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, I'm thinking back to when I was in first year or when I was applying to university, I was really nervous that um, that whole feeling of being a number, not a name was going to impact my university experience. But uh, I was mentioning this earlier in a, in a comment, there's like a real culture of care on campus. Uh, and I fully came here thinking my profs would not care about who I was as a person. And that has not been my experience at all. Um, they were really approachable, really easy to talk to, and they were so wonderful. Every time I have questions, they're there. So I'll motor on to our next question. Um, thinking back to when you were applying to universities, what uh, made you choose to do your undergraduate degree here at Carleton? What made you pick Carleton? Yeah, so a little bit of a story time. I actually went to different tours of different universities in Canada to see which university I liked the most. Um, and I'm I'm going to tell you this, and I'm being 100% honest. As soon as I, I stepped a foot like in a Carleton University, I could feel the sense of community. I could feel people trying to help each other, trying to support each other. And for me, that was so important. And that that's actually what made me pick Carleton over any other. The other thing too, is that I love research. Research is my passion. So uh, I saw how many opportunities I could, like I could get at Carleton with research. So that was kind of like, okay, this is perfect. This is for me. I have the sense of community. I'll be together with amazing people and I'll be doing whatever I love. So that's, that's why I chose Carleton and, and I don't regret it at all. <laughs> Oh, I'm next. OK. <laughs> um, so yeah, like thinking back to like when I was looking at different schools, I'm going to be honest when I was initially applying from high school out of or out of high school to university, I didn't really consider Carleton. Um, There's always so much talk, you know, about like which schools are better and which cities. So hearing all of the different things that people had to say kind of turned me away from Carleton and I actually regret even listening to those people's opinions. Like people have said earlier, do what's right for you. Um, like if you feel like like a certain school or something is better for you, then do what you feel is in your best interest. Um, and that's something that you know is really important. And what made me choose Carleton is all my friends actually from high school that went to Carleton, they didn't have any bad thing to say about Carleton. Literally every single thing I ever heard was a good story. Like whether it be their professors really cared, they had really good experiences with other students, um, different clubs that they were joining. There's so many different things at Carleton. And I think, you know, that's something that you shouldn't overlook whenever you're looking at a university. Um, definitely something important. And I definitely regret, like if I do regret something, it's I regret not coming to Carleton sooner because like it's personally changed my life and I think it could change yours too. Uh, so why Carlton? Um, like Sarita said, which is it's interesting that she said it because I'm going to say the exact same thing. But the moment that I stepped onto campus, um, I felt like it was the right place for me to be. Like I, I did my tour, my first tour of Carlton um, in September of grade 12. I was really excited to come. Um, and like the moment that I got there, I was like, OK, I don't, do I really need to see anywhere else? Like, I'm feeling very comfortable here. Like, not only is the campus fantastic. I mean, it's like a little island, like two of the sides are rivers, which fantastic. There's tunnels, fantastic. Um, but it just like it felt kind of homey. And even though it's like a decently sized school, it just felt like a community, which was really interesting. Um, another thing that I had going for me was that I had a friend who was in second year at the time 
Um, so she like took me around campus. We happened to be going into the, like she was in the program that I wanted to apply to. Um, so she was able to like show me around and like really tell me about like kind of the vibe on campus. And she said that it was like, like Lily was saying, a community of care. Um, and that the faculty really does care about you. You're not just a number. Like I know in high school, they like to tell you that like your profs don't care about you and you can't come and talk to them about things, but they would much pre like prefer that you go and talk to them. Um, and like your TAs are always there for you. The whole teaching team is there for you. Um, so it's, it's really an interesting like vibe on campus. It's, it's really comfortable and you feel like you're being supported. So that was like a big reason why I chose to came. And of course my, um, my parents were really impressed with the past program. They, they were astounded. Um, and then just another last thing that I'll mention because it was a factor for me, I'm not from Ottawa, so I was going to be on residence and the residences were fantastic. And the cafeteria is like one of the best in Ontario. So if that's important to you, which it was for me, um, it's definitely good. <laughs> I wish I could bring something novel to this conversation that hasn't been talked about already. Um, in my admissions process, when I was choosing between universities, it was between Ottawa U and Carleton. And what leaned me towards Carleton was simply just the vibe of the campus in the sense that Carleton, in my eyes, feels more like a campus. Um, having attended Ottawa U, the Ottawa U campus is sprawled across downtown, which can be beneficial in so many ways. But Carleton's campus is very closed off. It's very scenic, right? Uh, a lot of recruitment posters for Carleton actually include a shot of the river, river building, and then the O train. It's a beautiful photo, and it really is a beautiful campus. So that especially. Um, further, there is a lot of student support on campus. Uh, I was chatting with, I think, the registrar's office uh, before I attended Carleton, and the people were so nice there. And I think that alone convinced me to go to Carleton, and here I am graduating. Yeah, I have the privilege of going last in this question and having to basically just repeat everything that all these people have said already. I think the self-contained campus, huge, huge benefit, just beautiful, the river, the canal, everything. Um, as someone who is in residence and has lived in residence, um, I would also vouch for the residence community, not even just the buildings, which are always nice in the CAF, which is really amazing, but the community that they have here and the, the things they have in place to make sure students feel supported in the residence life is just, incredible. I've been very impressed as both a student living here and then now as a residence fellow. Um, and yeah, I just think overall the uh, community feel that the campus provides. It also is helpful to, you know, when you're walking to your classes uh, to be able to like see beautiful scenery around you and really nice buildings. We have new buildings being built all the time too. So you really see the growth and uh, people walking around enjoying themselves in the quad or whatever. There's just so many like scenic shots that represent Carleton. So that's that's what I would say. That was excellent. I think truthfully my own why for coming to Carleton, my own reason is very similar. Um, when I first came, I came for a campus tour when I was in grade 11, a um, bit of a keener, but my tour guide was so passionate and excited about showing me the campus and showing our group the campus that I think, I think maybe uh, their passion was contagious because I truly like from that moment on, I'm like, I see myself being a student here. I see myself sitting in the library. I, I see myself just like connecting here. Um, and that was a, like a huge motivator for me. So it's great to hear other folks stories, other other perspectives. So our next question, I'm really excited about this one. I'm excited to hear to say, what is one of your favorite Carleton highlights so far? For me, actually, I'm going to tell tell you about my Akobo experience I got at Health Canada. Um, I got to work in a lab at Health Canada that kind of researchers how like the damage in white blood cells from radiation. Um, it was an amazing opportunity because I got to be in a lab, work in a lab and actually 
arrange a set of experiments and just be by myself doing sciencey and fun things. Um, not just that, but also the group I was working with was really involved with uh, analyzing um, astronaut blood. So uh, it was pretty cool to know like these all these people, all the people from the work uh, from my bureau kind of knew every single astronaut because they need to give their blood so that we can test it. And that was actually a pretty cool experience. I got to learn so much from like space, but also damage of radiation and also being in the lab and having amazing and cool people to hang out with. Um, and you know, uh, even though the process of applying uh, to jobs, especially in the co-op program, might be a little bit, you know, stressful. Carlton always tries to push and help you with anything you need and push you to, you know, to get involved in as many opportunities you can. Um, that was an amazing experience, and that's why I always encourage all students to actually get involved with the co-op program and make sure that you get as much experience and opportunities as you as you can. <clears throat> All right, so one of my favorite or one of my highlights at Carleton is actually a course I took. Um, it was this past summer and it's a it's a neuropharmacology course that I took with um, Dr. Zach Patterson. And the reason why this is such a highlight for me is because I've always been interested in kind of, you know, the interactions that different drugs have, <clears throat> like their effects they have on the brain and then subsequently their effects on the rest of the body. Um, and it was such an interesting course because he he really brought up, you know, a lot of relevant topics that we're experiencing today. Like, for example, there's like an opioid epidemic going on in Canada and different parts of the world now as well. Um, and he was part of the actual, I believe it was a, it was a council of some sort, but he was part of like the people that kind of monitor how these drugs are getting into the communities uh, like all throughout Canada. So I thought that was really, really cool and really important and something that, you know, if you have the chance to um, to study or to even take a class on, I think it's really, really interesting. Yeah, so I haven't had quite as much experience uh, at Carleton as some of the other folks on the panel, but I would have to say that my highlight from last year in my first year was uh, a bunch of my friends because i'm from ottawa so a bunch of my friends who were attending carlton we got together and we decided to join a intramural basketball league and we actually ended up winning the intramural basketball league last year which was really cool it was super fun to be able to do that with all my friends and i think that kind of just demonstrates how there's something for everyone you know we had people on that team who had never met each other before and we just knew each other from like our floors and residents or our mutual friend here, mutual friend there. And we really became a really close group and we're still in contact. We hope to we hope to bring the team back once <laughs> once it's available again. And I think it just goes to show you that uh, people want to find community. They want to find others who are like minded. And if you're worried about that, uh, you shouldn't be because there are people who will connect with you on some level when you get here. Yeah, to answer this question, uh, there's a lot of highlights to pick from now thinking about it. Um, after second year, I was lucky enough to get a research opportunity on campus, uh, independent of co-op. And I spent the entire summer doing cancer research and testing a potential cancer drug that was developed by my supervisor. Uh, and its role on off-target effects as well. Now, this entire summer was me trying to do this one experiment which simply did not, could not go right. And it took so much effort and so much thinking and so much troubleshooting in order to figure it out. But luckily enough, by the end of August, it was a four month term. So pretty much I was doing research from the beginning of May all the way to the end of August. Now, finally, at the end of August, this assay finally worked and I was able to get this data to be published. Now, I will admit, I would say the first three and a half months were not a highlight at Carleton. I would say that was actually a lot of stress. Um, but the moment that all worked out makes me realize why I enjoy research so much. There's something addictive about not knowing whether an experiment's going to work. And yeah, that's also why I chose this program and why I'm here.
So there's a lot of things that I could talk about, but I think the coolest thing um, that I've done so far is uh, the second year genetics class, you have a lab and in it, one of the labs you get to do one week is um, you spit in a cup and then you run your DNA to see if you're like immune to coffee, like if coffee doesn't do anything for you, like genetically. Um, and I think that's a really cool flex. Like the labs at Carlton are really fantastic, but this one, like being able to analyze your own DNA and then to see if you're resistant to caffeine, such a cool thing. Um, love to tell that to anyone that'll listen to me. So <laughs> yeah, that's something to look forward to if you take that one. I love that. Um, one of my favorite Carlton highlights, I'll be super brief, but um, in the fourth year of the health sciences program, there's something called like a capstone project. Uh, and you get to take on sort of a personalized fourth year project um, that's a little different from a thesis and a little different from a research essay. So um, I had a field placement at the Canadian Association of Occupational Therapists, uh, and I was actually able to write a couple of articles for them for the national practice magazine um, that all occupational therapists in Canada uh, read. And I was able to combine these aspects from my major in science and, and my interest in disability and chronic illness um, with some of the skills I was learning from my minor in communications and, and how to be strategic about, about writing. So I top notch, absolutely loved that. Really, really fortunate to have had that experience. But it's great hearing from other folks too. I miss those genetics labs, Emily. <laughs> So the next question is, uh, what student clubs or organizations have you been involved in? And do you have any advice for incoming students who might be interested in joining them? So I'll kind of take you on a journey um, about my experiences in like extracurriculars at Carleton. So I jumped right in in first year. Um, a couple weeks in, I got an interview um, with Millie herself, actually. She was the president of the Health Science Society at the time, um, and I was applying to be the first year representative. Um, so I interviewed with her, and <laughs> thank God um, she gave me the, the position. So I started there. I was just kind of like um, a communication between like my cohort, so like the first years in my program, and the society. So that was how I got my foot in the door. Um, from there, in my second year, I thought, why not go for it again? Um, so I applied or like I, I ran to be um, a co-VP of communications for the Health Science Society. Um, and me and the girl that I was running with uh, were fortunately elected. Uh, so I spent my second year doing like social media kind of stuff for the Health Science Society, and that was a really good time. And then I also was a fall orientation facilitator with the Student Experience Office. So um, fall orientation, I'm sure you all know what that is. Uh, it's a really good time, um, especially as a facilitator. Like, I think that honestly, the facilita facilitators probably have like more fun than the first years do. It's such a good time. Um, either way, it's such a good time as a first year as well. But uh, that was a really fun thing that I was involved with. And then now, oh, also in second year, I um, ran to be the health science departmental representative for the science society that Millie was talking about earlier. Um, so that's kind of how I got my foot in the door with that one was as the departmental rep. So kind of like the first year rep, I was just kind of like um, the person that communicates between the society and like the department. And then, so now that I'm in third year, um, I thought I'd uh, kick it up a notch. Um, so this year I'm the VP of communications for the Science Society, which has been such a blast. Like it's such an amazing team. I couldn't be more grateful for the team. Um, Millie has done a great job with the society this year and I'm really thankful to be a part of it. Um, so as for advice on getting involved, I might be a little biased because my job is social media, but I think that social media is really the best place to start. Like, um, you should go follow at Carlton SciSoc and at Carlton SSSC. Um, any, any like social media you can find about your faculty that you're interested in would be a great follow. Like, it's just a great place to know like what um, opportunities are open, so if they're hiring for anything or events that are coming up, it's a, it's a great way to just like keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on. Um, so that's my advice. Like I 
I would say. If you're nervous in first year about trying to balance your workload and an extracurricular, if you are passionate enough about the things that you're involved with, you will always make time for it. I was nervous about it too, but it works out. Like it's, it's really important to be involved and start to build like your social networks and stuff. So definitely seek ways to get involved no matter where you go, but definitely follow Carlton Sysock. That's all I have to say. I'll pass it on to the next. Yeah, so like a lot of people on this panel, I, I would say I'm also involved in the Science Society, the SSC. Those are like the two main ones I'd say uh, that do a lot of work at Carleton for Science students. Um, but I also think it's important to get involved in things outside of science when you come to Carleton because there are just so, so many opportunities. Um, personally, I've been involved with like Engineers Without Borders, intramural basketball, like I mentioned, uh, a business group called Enactus. You know, there's so many avenues you can get involved with. Um, and another thing I'll say is a lot of students uh, come in and they think, you know, I'm just a first year, like, what can I do? Like, do I even have the qualifications to join any of these groups? But I'll tell you right now that all these groups love first years. They love getting, you know, people right when they come in and get involved. They love like cultivating them as leaders, helping them out. So, you know, just reach out. We're always open to new people, especially first years, because we want to we want to get you in there so that you stick with us for the for your four years plus of your degree. So um, look out for those things. And then also the club expos. I don't know if that's been mentioned yet. That's like a huge, huge way to uh, find clubs that interest you or the club expos, whether they're online or in person. Yeah, so adding on to what Mackenzie said, I think there really is a commonality among on, amongst all our panelists today. Uh, I am also a part of the SSSC. Uh, I'm a team lead and mentor there. Uh, I also am involved with the Science Society, as Emily's talked about. I am the VP academic for the school year. Um, and I'm also involved with the Carleton Chemistry and Biochemistry Society as the Vice President of Finance. Now, I, looking back on my first year, I wasn't really that involved with anything on campus. And that showed with my community and my social groups. Of course, I'd met people because of my lab partners. But I think by joining all these extracurriculars, I was capable of meeting so many more people. But then there's another more advice that I can give of, regarding joining these. Join things because you want to join them and because either there's something that there is there that you can learn that you would like to learn about or something that you're simply passionate about. A lot of people try to join a lot of these simply because it would look good on the resume. Now, I'm not saying that something that looks good on your resume and something that you're passionate about are mutually exclusive. There's absolutely overlap. But I think finding something that you are passionate about can speak so much more volumes and make your university experience so much more enjoyable. So best of luck with that, guys. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Yeah, I want to quickly shout out a couple other clubs. We talk a lot about some of the science specific ones, but there's a ton of clubs and societies on campus. I think there's over 300 active ones. Um, there's like the Outdoors Club who is works really closely with Parks Canada. They coordinate like hikes and things. Um, there's our like dance crew, CUDC. They are incredibly talented and every year they put on a showcase that is so hype. Um, there's lots of really cool things. There's a sandwich club potentially. I hear about this every year and every year I want to join. I would love a sandwich club. Um, but I, I too have found a lot of, I've, found a lot of growth from participating in extracurricular activities uh, and I feel like Carleton has a really rich portfolio of different groups you can join and be a part of so there's something for everyone. So I'll jump to our next question. I think this is actually our, our final question of the evening. If you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice about starting university, what would that piece of advice be? Um, so I would say that I would tell my younger self to not be afraid and to actually believe in myself. Um, a lot of times, you know, uh, this is something really common and it's called imposter syndrome that you don't believe 
that you can do some things or you don't believe that you deserve what you're doing. Um, and it's totally normal to go through that. But um, again, I want to emphasize that you have to believe in yourself and like this is something really cliche, but the sky is the limit. Um, whatever you want to do, whatever you are passionate about, do it. Um, and the best thing is at Carlton, you can find a lot of a supportive community, a community that wants to help you. Um, and don't be afraid to get involved. Even as a first year, there's many opportunities. Um, I got to play around with butterflies in the butterfly show as a, you know, as a volunteer. And I had so much fun in my first year. Uh, I got to meet, meet really amazing people. So yeah, uh, believe in yourself and, you know, I know you can do it. Whatever you want, I know you can do it. I think that my big piece of advice is um, just to put yourself out there. And this is like in a couple ways. So make friends with the people in your classes. Um, other people are great resources and it's good to have like people to lean on. Um, it's, it's always a nice thing to build your social network. Um, but also don't be afraid to like ask for help, especially from the profs and the TAs. They are there to help you. Um, it's something that I wasn't fully aware of in my first year and I wish that I was, is that like your profs are your biggest resource. Like they know so much, they have so much experience, they have so many things that they wanna tell you. Um, I know that like the profs are really sad if no one comes to their office hours, like they, they're really there to help you. So don't be afraid and in feeling like, oh, who am I? Like I'm no one special, why would they wanna to talk to me about anything? Like absolutely, they're there to help you. They would love to hear from you and you won't ever go wrong by contacting a prof or like reaching out for help. And I think that's my biggest thing um, that I would tell myself going into the first year again is just like put yourself out there. Don't be afraid of not being good enough or um, being afraid to talk to other people because it's absolutely the most important thing you can do for yourself. Yeah, my biggest piece of advice is kind of similar to Sarita's, um, kind of like believing in yourself. Uh, but mine would be to just, you know, very similar, but just stop doubting yourself. You know, you're here for a reason. Um, like if, you know, you get into Carleton, obviously you got there because of your grades, you're smart enough to be there. Uh, so stop doubting yourself and just, you know, believe that you can do it and you will do it. I absolutely love that. Big fan of the whole believe in yourself vibe. I see that as a common theme among folks' responses to that question this evening. I think if I had to go back in time, I feel like the piece of advice I'd give myself is to just fully be myself. Um, this is the advice I give to everyone who's going into university. Always be yourself. I think something I feel particularly lucky to be a Carleton student, or I feel particularly lucky to be a Carleton student because I can be myself and I know that no matter where I am, who I'm talking to on campus, it's like, it's cool, it's chill. Um, there's there's something really for everyone. It, no matter what your interests are, there's other people at Carleton who share those same interests. Um, so I love that. So that actually wraps up our, our prepared questions uh, for, for the evening. But before I go, uh, I'd like to add a couple of quick things. Uh, if you're interested in seeing what students in the Faculty of Science are up to this year, uh, I do have some social media recommendations. We've heard a couple of them already, but I'd like to shout them out again. Uh, you can follow at Carlton SciSoc, that's Carlton S-C-I-S-O-C -S -S on Instagram or any other social media platforms to learn about what we're up to. Um, you should also check out at Carlton S-S-S-C, that's three S's and one C. Um, you can learn all about the events, services, and supports that are facilitated by their staff and their mentors at the Science Student Success Center. It's an awesome resource for students in the Faculty of Science. Uh, and lastly, please make sure you're following at Carlton underscore future uh, for updates about all the upcoming group events. Thank you all so much. That's it for me.
I just wanted to quickly say a huge thank you to our team that was on the panel today. I think that was awesome and brought a lot of great uh, memories back uh, for me. So that was awesome. And, uh, you know, being a science student myself, I, I do just want to quickly shout out a couple of, of events happening. I've linked the events page uh, in our Q&A chat. Uh, we have a health sciences spotlight event happening this Saturday, November 21st from 11 till 12. That's happening. Um, you'll get to learn a little bit more about this program, see the building here from alumni so check that one out and then we also have a, a neuroscience event happening December 2nd so make sure you check out this link and you'll get updated with different uh, different Carleton events going on uh, that are science sort of tailored to you okay thank you so much everyone for joining us and we will stick around in the Q&A chat for another 10 minutes or so have a great night